Hello guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about if GPU mining is still profitable and looking forward into the future to see if it will make a comeback. So currently GPU mining is obviously not profitable. This is at 10 cents per kilowatt hour, which is still a very low power rate and the profitability is basically zero. So you're making around 16 cents at the highest possible per day. When even back maybe two years ago, you could get way higher profitabilities upwards of around even $1, $2. And pre-Ethereum merge, it used to be around $5 a day for the top end GPU out there. So you have a bunch of coins that have kind of been floating around. Allo has just gone over to ASIC, so those are going to be shipping out soon and the network hash rate is going to get very high. So that's not going to be viable anymore. One thing that has been good is Zealous, but you can only take advantage of that on these 170 HXs. The rest of the GPUs out there don't really do too well on that network. As you go down, you have a bunch of other coins as well. Ergo is popping in there, Xano, Claw, Conflux, and a bunch of others. If we scroll down, BTG, and that's about it for GPU mineable coins. So the ones that have been around for a while, obviously Ergo, Ravencoin, Flux. So those kind of got decimated by the Ethereum merge and haven't really made a recovery in terms of the mining profitability since then. So over the years, we've obviously seen coins that have gone from GPUs over to ASICs. That's a natural progression. Some of them stay GPU mineable, which obviously brings into question if that's the best way to go, because the coins that have succeeded in terms of Casper, Lithium, Radiant, Allo have all switched over to ASICs at some point. And the ones that haven't necessarily succeeded are the ones that stick with a GPU mining algorithm. So Carpow with Ravencoin, basically any other coin that's using Carpow as well. Zealous is a new one, so we can't really comment on that. But Conflux, Ergo, Nexa, I believe that there's ASICs coming for this soon, or there is already out. Ironfish, which actually forked to get rid of the ASICs. That hasn't done so well for them. Flux, Warthog is a new one that's coming up, which we can't really speak on in terms of where it's going, but it doesn't look like it's going to have ASICs on the network. Dynex is another one that did really well for GPU miners, but didn't progress. And mostly all these coins that didn't progress from GPU mining had a lot of price difficulty starting around a year ago. So you have a bunch of other ones. Abelium was a good one for a while. Neoxa was good as well, but that was Carpow algorithm. Block X was good. Carlson was bringing in nice profitabilities for GPU miners at least relative to the time frame. And a bunch of other AI coins that are on Carpow as well. They did great at the launch, so maybe one to two months of profitability and then it dipped off. The same for a bunch of other AI coins like Neur AI as well. Dynex is technically an AI coin, I believe, but it's using that proof of useful work, which hasn't really taken off quite yet. And the same with Flux. That proof of useful work was supposed to offer more profitability for miners. But since they had a halving, as well as Ravencoin, that had a halving just after the Ethereum merge, it didn't really allow miners to become profitable too much on that network. So you can see here, if we just scroll down, you can see a bunch of coins that have gone from GPU mining over to ASIC mining, Allo being the newest one. Then you have Radiant and then Alephium and Casper coin. Obviously, Bitcoin and Litecoin, Dogecoin, they all came from GPU mining. Monero is there, but I don't think that this actual miner for it is that good. It is just kind of comparable to CPUs at the moment. But you do have a lot of coins that start to choose to go to ASIC straight away. I don't know if that's the best case to do things in terms of bringing on more hash rate, because I think it's better to build up the hash rate through CPUs, GPUs, FPGAs, and then onto ASICs. Inherently for a while, it's less secure on a network to switch over to ASICs because there is a large amount of the hash rate hitting the network from a small amount of machines. This is why GPU mining does so well, it's because it's so decentralized and everyone has a GPU and not necessarily getting into ASIC mining. So the main way that I kind of look for coins, and I would say that this is probably the best way to look for coins before you start GPU mining, because the only way that you can really be profitable on GPU mining is if you get onto a coin very early before exchanges list and even before it ends up on mining pool stats to see new coins here. And the main way is through altcoin announcements. So on the Bitcoin forum, this is typically where I'd look where you find Casper coin, Alephium, Radiant, Nexa, all those coins that were kind of good after the GPU merge. This is where people were looking and finding them 
mining them before they even got onto exchanges or before they even had pools. And that's one skill that you kind of got to learn if you want to start GPU mining or GPU mining profitably, speculatively as well, is obviously running command line wallets, running command line miners instead of, you know, when they get onto a generic mining program or they get onto mining pools, that's so running your own node as well is also a good skill to learn so that you can get in on these coins quicker. Through looking here, there's not really much that I would personally go for. Warthog has been the only one that kind of stands out a little bit more than the rest of them. But there is also no kind of new ones coming out that provide anything. The last one that we can kind of relate back to is Caspercoin. The rest of them didn't really outperform Caspercoin in terms of technology. Lithium is kind of up there because it does use that same lock DAG algorithm, but it's not as fast. It does have smart contracts though. So that obviously added to how much people wanted to mine it because it was profitable. There was more fees on the network and stuff like that. But as you look down the list, there's not really many GPU mineable coins that you would go for that you would even try and hold. So the main method of being at least profitable within the future, because you're not going to be profitable if you're mining speculatively, but the main method would be to find a coin here on an altcoin announcements and look through the white papers, look at the team, and then make a decision whether you want to spec mine it for the gain of future profits. A lot of these, once you spec mine them before they hit an exchange, will have a nice pump upwards because nobody really knows the price. They're just speculating on it at that point. And then when it hits an exchange, you can kind of sell it for whatever the highest price is. There will always be a little bit of volume there that you can use to sell off. And that's kind of one of the main ways that people are profitable with GPU mining. It's a lot of work to be profitable, at least looking forward into the future for GPU mining. We obviously have those 50 series and the newer series coming from AMD, but I don't think that's gonna make it too much more profitable. It is gonna be higher hash rates because it kind of always is when there's a new release, but the price of them is also gonna be very high. So you know, the ROI times is not going to be great on them at all. Plus, as soon as a certain amount of people get those GPUs, the hash rate will hit all of these networks that we see here. And that's going to further make it harder to mine and less profitability. So obviously, Ethereum Classic is not technically GPU mineable, but it's got the highest emissions. So we're sorting by emissions. Cubic is next. Allo, we can kind of count out. Next one below that is just Ravencoin. So... If you're mining, you would probably want to be way more efficient for Ravencoin, but there are other ways that you can be efficient for GPU mining. You want to go for GPUs mainly at this point that can also handle AI and large language learning models, because going into the future, I don't think GPU mining is going to have kind of a resurgence and mainly most of the GPU power will be rented outwards. So you can make around, you know, 11 cents a day mining or you could rent it out and you could make i don't know three dollars a day just by renting it out to these people that want to do ai or deep learning on your gpu so i think gpu mining is definitely going to fade away and there's going to be a lot of people using it for ai and that's kind of where it's heading for this kind of hardware i think there will still be a place so you have to create a coin cpu mineable gpu mineable fpgas and then asics that's still going to be a progression but I don't think there's going to be as many GPU miners out there because it's way more profitable to go over and rent out your GPU mining hardware, especially the ones, as I said, that can handle AI tasks. And that also comes in tandem with CPUs as well. So you need a high-end CPU to actually run that task as well as the GPU. So going forward into the future, as I said, I don't really see GPU mining making a resurgence, but I definitely see a need or a case for you to build a high-end rig with a high-end CPU and GPU. Also utilizing some of the methods from GPU mining in terms of, you know, having a lot of GPUs on a rack, maybe eight of them, that could bring in a lot of profitability over time just by renting them out to people that want to do AI work instead of actually GPU mining. But if you are gonna go down that route, it takes a lot of research into, you know, the forums, and then having to set up, as I said, nodes, wallets, and miner files. I also want to comment on mainly the fact that a lot of new power coins that we see here are basically going for ASIC mining algorithms straight off the bat. The only other one that we kind of see 
that uses GPU mining algorithms is CarPow. So a lot of people elect to go for that straight off the bat as well. It's either going to be CarPow, Script, or a SHA-256. That's mainly what you see as you go down the list because the other ones are just not as good as these three. And there's a way bigger space that can actually mine on this. So you have a lot of script miners, you have a lot of Bitcoin miners, and you have a lot of people that have GPUs that are efficient on CarPow. So you might as well have that as your algorithm because it will incentivize people to actually mine your coin and uphold your network. So that's why you see a lot of people doing script, Shaft 256 and CarPow. CarPow is mainly just to gain all the GPU miners and then SHA-256 is maybe speculative ASIC miners, same with script. Overall, I don't see it coming back, at least within the next two years, unless we see a massive coin that really has good utility. We had had them before, after the Ethereum merge. You know, a lot of the times Ravencoin, Flux, and Ergo took all the heat from other new networks. Their profitability has plummeted, whilst other smaller networks were allowed to be kind of speculatively mined and then that increased profits over time if you held on. So let me know your thoughts on GPU mining, if you're still kind of GPU mining, or if you're looking to build for the future of AI and deep learning. Also make sure you like the video and subscribe for more content like this.